Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today it's time to continue our exploring color series with one of my all-time favorites. It's time to talk about the color that wasn't there, magenta. This one's gonna be fun. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Magenta, the imaginary color. Um, originally created in 1859 and named in 1860 for a battle uh, of the French victory over the Austrians uh, in the Magenta area of Italy. Uh, French has, or, or sorry, Magenta has really come into a, a prominence in a lot of different media showing up in obviously a main color scheme and things like synth wave and stuff like that. It's a poppy bright color that covers a fair decent spectrum. Now, the reason it's imaginary is because there is no single wavelength that actually creates magenta. When you see two different colors of light, your brain will usually sort of average the wavelength of the light it's seeing and create that as the color you see. However, if you were to average the wavelengths of like red and purple or stuff like that that would create magenta, in fact, you would get green, but your brain doesn't like that because green doesn't make any sense. And so instead we've evolved to see this as magenta. And we're not alone. Uh, many things like flowers have evolved to be quite bright magenta because that provides maximum contrast to green, which is the complementary color. Now, there are different types of magentas, whether you're talking about uh, the you know RGB or whether you're talking about CMYK. And in fact, in CMYK, magenta is the M of it. It is a primary color. Whereas in RGB, it'd be something like 255, 0, 255, basically the absence of green. Now, when we talk about creating shadows with magenta, we can extract the normal colors that our brain is sort of combined, smashing together to make this, i.e. we can pull out the deep red, pull out the deep purple, pull out the deep blue, and we will in fact then either push it to a cold or warmer shadow as we would like. We can also just use something like black, that's perfectly fine. But a better answer is to tap into that complementary nature and pull something like phthalo green. Phthalo green will work basically by infusing the color that is not reflected at all in the normal magenta light, like your brain isn't seeing green, it doesn't reflect any green. By infusing that, we get a natural shadow. Now, with the highlights, we can of course go with some of our traditional highlight colors like ice yellow. We can accentuate into a more pink with sickly pink, or we can just use standard white, much like we would use standard black. All of those are perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. However, we can pull the same trick we pulled with highlights, or sorry, with shadows with the highlights. So we can integrate a pastel or a faded green. Once again, because green isn't a color that is that the magenta is reflecting at all and our brain isn't witnessing, we can actually integrate it depending on sort of the green tint, how much tint there is in the green we use as either a highlight or a shadow to produce really interesting results. The last option for our highlights is to just punch in a fluorescent magenta. Uh, in fact, there are many fluorescent magentas. It's a great fluorescent color. And so our highlight could just be popping the color up very strong and having an extremely saturated, extremely bright version of it. All right, let's make this real. And you'll see the difference here. When we take magenta and we integrate deep red versus deep purple, we get very different tones that are used to combine the magenta expressed. And very quickly, it won't feel like magenta anymore because we're getting back into tones that the cones and rods in our eyes more easily see. But you notice when you mix in that phthalo green, you get this wonderful, not quite purple color. And depending on how much you mix in, you can really get wonderfully naturalistic shadows. Hey, I'm just gonna jump in the middle real quick here. I'm not adding anything to the video. I just wanted to say, hey, if you're watching this, hit like, subscribe if you haven't already. We have fun videos like this here all the time. And don't forget, we do have a Patreon focused on review, feedback, and taking your next step in the journey. All that's down below. Okay, I'll stop interrupting now. Let, let's get back to the color. So let's make this real now with highlights. As I said, if we go with something like a sickly pink or a pastel pink or anything like that, we're just going to express a brighter magenta effectively and push it more into a traditional pink spectrum. Nothing wrong with it, it's fine. 
if we integrate something like ice yellow we can retain a little bit more of that uh, warm feeling in there since those yellow tones will make the magenta feel a bit more warm. Magenta is another one of those colors that can go either warm or cold. And in fact, when we pull in the verdigris, as you can see here, you get a very cold highlighted magenta. And this then allows you between these different highlight and color patterns to set your overall light scheme with either warm or cold highlights or warm or cold shadows. Now, magenta paint as it exists in the bottle with the pigments we use in miniature paints is often extremely transparent, just sort of the nature of the thing. So here I'm going over a very dark color because I wanted to show you how much that is going to set the tone of an extremely translucent color. Uh, to get full opacity, you're really gonna have to do multiple touches and magenta will be extremely, extremely responsive to what's underneath it. It will be much brighter if you put it over a bright white, much dimmer if you put it over a black. So just do know your undershade matters. So here I'm using some cold highlights and you can see um, with the verdigris integrated in and the blue pulled out, uh, or sorry, the blue punched up, sorry, it becomes uh, very striking and you'll get, you will get very hard sort of lines if you take these big jumps like I'm doing in this video. We can also use more warmer magenta. So this is more, this is mixed with ice yellow for a slightly softer, more traditional, almost pink to, to highlight the magenta. And you can see how that doesn't have the same cold, hard edge that the verdigris does. Either is perfectly fine. It's just a question of where you wanna go. Both when you're making big value jumps like this will of course show these layer lines, but we'll fix that later. Uh, now let's put in some shadows. So here I'm going to use the Thalo Green Integrated Shadow. And to me, this is such a wonderful color. I love magenta plus Thalo Green for shadows. Um, it's just so naturalistic and it produces a really, really natural dark tone. Um, it's very easy to, to obviously mix in there and it works so well on regular magenta as your shadow tone. Of course, the other advantage to magenta paints um, is that they can glaze rather easy. So here I have a little bit of thinned down traditional magenta. And so we don't have to worry as much about the fact when we jump uh, big value jumps of light, the fact that there is a uh, that there's going to be a layer line there because magenta itself glazes so masterfully well uh, that it just becomes really, really easy to smooth those transitions down. And again, by having the magenta going over the dark and over the light, it will now express different uh, sort of shades of that tone and you'll get a much more interesting sort of panoply of colors. Now, finally, I'm going to cover my highlights with the fluorescent magenta. One of the keys with working with fluorescence is that, first of all, miniature paint fluorescence cover like absolute poop. So you always want something extremely bright underneath them. So here I used those existing highlights as basically just a map to use the fluorescent. And when you apply this, it actually can feel brighter and more intense than the brighter color I'm covering up, even though that was a higher value. Because this fluorescent magenta is so much more saturated, it's gonna end up having a lot of punch. In the end, any of these methods can work and will provide you with a very different feel to your miniature. So there you go, that's magenta, a really fun, interesting, powerful color. It can do so much. And it's one of those interesting colors that even though it doesn't actually exist, it does exist for us and should be and can be a very virtuous part of a lot of different projects you work on. Even if you're not looking for something that's totally synthwave and bright and eye-popping, magenta can still be a great part of an overall color scheme that really adds a lot of intensity, brightness, life, and visual interest into your pieces. So if you like this, give it a like, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions or comments, drop those down below. I always answer every comment and question. Don't forget we've got a Patreon here uh, focused on review and feedback and helping you take your next step. There's also an awesome Discord community around that. You can find all the information for that down below. But as always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.